Now for a tool called OS Query. This is more of an enterprise level tool, though a business level tool. It is possible to use on a home network if you're really serious about detection and analyzing your systems. It's a tool that can be used for finding and detecting threats, basically, and it works very well on multiple systems, hence why it's an enterprise tool. And really, you need to bring in the information from it into some sort of analyzer via syslog through to a seam or something like that, S-I-E-M, which is why it's an enterprise type tool. But you can, as I said, still use it in the home environment as well if you're quite serious. It works best on Mac. It works on Linux and supports Windows too, but it definitely shines on Mac the most. But as it is evolving, it'll work well for all environments as it evolves more and more. And it's actually provided free. It's open source and it's actually from Facebook of all people. And it's very good. It's a solution that they've created for a problem that they needed to solve themselves. And that was the ability to be able to query lots of systems to understand their state when it comes to detecting and finding threats, understanding the current configuration of a system and whether it may have changed or not. So what OS Query does is it exposes operating system information via SQL tables and it exposes the sort of information that we have already been searching for with the other tools that we've gone through in this section. So the best way to think of OS Query is that it allows you to ask questions of your operating system as if your operating system was a database. And when you're querying a database, you use SQL queries. And if you look here in front of us, this is a SQL query if you're not familiar. So you would use queries like this and it will provide you with the sort of information that you would get with the other tools that we've used like Netstat, LSOF, Process Explorer, Sysdig, but by using SQL queries. So it's probably best to give you an example. So here we are on a Mac. So to give you an example, I'm going to use the interactive tool that comes with OS Query, and that is OS Query I. So there we are, we're in the interactive environment now dot help and we can see the various options so let me just give you a simple example select star from startup items startup items in this case is the tables so what we're saying here is we want to select everything from the startup items so what is in startup items essentially and then in sql we always end with this and there we are those are the results so that looks a little bit messy on the screen but that will go into a log file so so maybe if i can make this look a little bit smaller so there you go that's a little bit easier to see now isn't it so you can see that's what's in the startup so with the other tools we were using like auto runs for windows this is an equivalent way of doing it by using sql commands and os query so this gives us a uniform way to query any operating system. So that same query will provide results for different operating systems. And instead of using different tools like PS and LSOF and Sysdig, you can use just the one tool to capture almost all of the information. Now this is written in C and that's deliberate so that it's nice and quick and it's lightweight and the use of SQL is deliberate so that people don't need to code in order to get this level of information. Because often what people would do is they would write something in maybe Python to get this sort of information. But the problem is Python isn't as fast as C. So what you've got here is you've got the speed because you've got C and you've got the simplicity because you've got SQL. So what sort of information can we get? Well, running processes, logged in users, password changes, USB devices that are on, firewall information, firewall exceptions, listening processes, installed packages, kernel modules, network connections, file system events. You can do file integrity monitoring, you can do virus scanning. So quite a lot there. So you want to download and install it. If you come to the downloads page here, you can find full instructions on how to do that. You can get it via hub, you can git clone it. On Mac, there's a package. You can also get it through brew. You can get it through yum for CentOS. There's Ubuntu dev packages. You can install it via app repositories. And on Windows, you can install it via Choco. Choco is a recommended way. So installation, follow the instructions there. There are three main components to OS Query, really. So first, there is the OS Query I. That's the interactive live 
ad hoc queries interface that we're in now that I showed you the previous query before the select star from startup underscore items. So that's just for your ad hoc queries. In the second tool, this is OS query D. That's the OS query daemon tool that's used for continuous detection on systems that will run on systems. And that causes scheduled preset queries to be run. And then it writes the results to a log or logs. And the default location for writing that is the file system. But in a real production environment, those logs would be configured to be sent off that system and you would be using maybe a transport such as syslog and then that will be taken for analysis into a seam s-i-e-m or into a tool like splunk or elk where they will be analyzed so os query d is generally how it would be used the interactive os query i is really just for ad hoc queries there are config files associated with how all of this is configured osquery.conf is one of the main ones. And if we look through here, this is essentially where you set up everything and what it does. So this is a JSON config file. It holds like schedule queries, file pass to monitor, and it can be located on the file system or it can be located on a HTTP, HTTPS server. So again, generally in a production environment, these would not be locally on your machine. They would be on a distant machine and you can use tools as a tool called Windmill that can help facilitate these config files being populated onto machines or read rather from a local machine and then off a web server. And as you can see in this config file, there are essentially those SQL queries like the one we run with the interactive environment and those are run and the results of those entered into a log. They would be then scooped back a syslog or some other mechanism and then back into Splunk or something like that. Or of course you can just entirely do it locally to your machine, but that is a little bit risky obviously because you are interacting then with the uh, malware or rather it's interacting with malware. You always want things to go off your machine so that the malware can't affect it or the hacker. And it's showing some locations to packs there. I'm going to show you what packs are in a second. So for configuration, you want to come to this URL here, this wiki, and follow the configuration instructions based on your platform to get OS Query up and running. And you can also look at here for installation information if the install doesn't go quite to plan. So we've been talking about these queries. So what can we query exactly out of this operating system and how do we know what all of the syntax is? Well, essentially, all the information is provided here. So if we look here, we've got tables that we can query for all platforms. And then, so for example, we've got users, uptime, processors, click on processors. These are, this is the table, this is a process table, and these are all the various bits of information that we can deem from the processors. And then that gives you an example there of how to do that. So select star from processors, where PID equals whichever PID it is that you want. And then we have the Windows or Microsoft specific ones. So as you can see here, we can query the registry, query the services, look at the programs, what products are installed by Windows, select star from programs, Poxic systems, Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, Syslog, Debian packages, IP tables, what kernel modules, with SQL queries, based on all this data that you can get from it, what we want to look for are indicators of compromise, IOCs, indicators of attack. We want to look for non-standard changes from what is normal to what is unusual. If you have a baseline, you want to look at changes away from your baseline. You want to look at known signatures of compromise. And when we look at the packs in a second, we'll see that this actually provides some known signatures of compromise that we can look at. And we also want to verify some types of settings that we may care about. So say, for example, encryption, if that changes, we want to be notified. But of course, you need to take your own approach based on your own environment. So I'm going to give you some examples here of the sort of things that you might want to look for. So here we're selecting the name and the path from the kernel extensions table where name is not like com.apple percentage. So this will display non-Apple kernel extensions. 
So something that we've already done with other tools. And if you remember with kernel extension viewer, this is exactly what we saw previously. But with this, we can automate it, we can schedule it, and we can do it on a large scale with lots of devices. And we can be notified when there's a change. So just zoomed in here a little bit, and I've entered another query here, a little bit more complicated. If you're not used to SQL, then this will seem quite complicated. But SQL is just something else that you need to learn. If you do know SQL, then you'll be thinking, this is quite an interesting way of getting information from a machine. So what we're doing here is we're getting the process name, the port and the PID for processes listening on all interfaces. Then if you can see that command here, we're trying to find every Mac OS launch daemon that launches an executable and that keeps running the executable. The results are a little difficult to see, but these would go into a log and then that log would be analyzed and then based on changes to that, you would be notified. And this is the command here to do that. Let me introduce you to PAX. On the tables page, you can see here we've got PAX. Now PAX are groups of queries that have been found to be useful. So if we look here, we can see incident response. And here is an example. This one's to verify firewall settings are as restrictive as you need. Identify unwanted firewall holes made by malware or humans. Retrieve the exceptions for the application layer firewall, etc., etc. So there's lots of things in here. Identify a system potentially vulnerable to disk cloning. Retrieves the current disk encryption status etc. So there's loads of items in here, loads of packs in here that you can choose to use. And if we go down here, we can even see there's compliance, there's monitoring, and there's also signatures of known attacks for OS X at least, but you can create your own for any. So say you wanted to know specifically if a set of machines had caught a specific type of malware, you would need to identify some sort of signature. Now in this case, that is a signature that would identify this particular malware. You would update your config files and then they would all report back on whether or not they were infected or not. Something that you can't really do with conventional antivirus or anti-malware tools. So let's just run this query for the fun of it. See if Mac control is on the system. And no results as expected. And there's more to this tool because of what it can do. It can be used as a file integrity monitor. So you can look to see if your ETC folder has had things added to it, your temp folder, your dev folder. You can basically look for changes. Check out this section here for setting up file integrity monitoring. You can also use Yara. Yara is a tool used by malware researchers to identify and classify malware. So you can use Yara in combination with this tool to effectively do malware scanning and querying. So that is OS query. I'm not fully digged into all of the details of this because there's a lot to this. And this is an enterprise tool, as you may imagine, because what this tool does is analyze the system and then produce text based logs. What it does not do is take those logs away, analyze them and provide results to you. That has to be provided as part of the infrastructure that would be available within your environment. And that would have to be something that you would set up. As I mentioned, Syslog, Windmill, Splunk, Elk, Asim. These are all the sort of things that would be in a security operation center that would receive this sort of information. And just to finish up on this, there's just one more tool I'd like to make you aware of, and that's GUR, which is the Google's Rapid Response Tool, which is free and open source. It's a remote live forensics and incident response tool, which is definitely worth checking out if you're in that sort of a field, if you're in a SOC or something like that, Security Operations Center. Again, not really suitable for home or the home environment, suitable for small businesses and upwards. That's good.